Well, hello there, everybody. Today we're going to have a look at how to overclock GTX 980 Ti. It just came out, so this is going to be something fresh. Uh, in order to do a review, I've been testing the overclocks, so I decided to do a, to do a guide for you as well, as long as I'm at it. So before we begin, uh, you need two things. It's time and software. Uh, software that I am using will be available available for from uh, official official websites, uh, MSI Afterburner and Heaven Benchmark. I'll leave the links in the description below this video for those downloads. Once you've downloaded and installed these programs, this is MSI Afterburner and you need to make sure that you set it up properly. Um, not the program itself, but the monitoring bit. So you need to monitor these four things. Temperature of the GPU, uh, core clock, memory clock, and power level. In order to set them up, you go into settings, monitoring, and over here you can drag and drop them as you please. Uh, put the tick next to, the, to it uh, in order to make sure that it's displayed here. Once everything that you want to monitor is at the top and the ticks are next to them, hit OK and they should be appearing in here. So that is number one. Uh, number two is if you have a reference card, uh, so not two or three fan versions, just a normal reference card, then you need, you will have to use the uh, fan curve that you will be enabling and creating yourself. So you go into settings, fan, enable user defined software, automatic fan control, and then you set up this curve. Don't copy this one because this is just a quick one uh, to make sure that the GPU doesn't run hot that I've created and don't use it, uh, find yours. And once it's enabled, it should look like this. If it's green, then it means that it's working. Uh, that user define is working. You can hit it over here and it's back to also now. Um, Unigen Heaven benchmark is used to stress your GPU because that's what you need to do when you're overclocking. You need to stress your GPU and monitor it for any signs of instability. So you set it up like so, uh, ultra quality, extreme tessellation, blah blah blah. Uh, well, the most important bit is here. Uh, do not put tick next to it. it, usually goes like this with a tick here. Remove the tick, run it in screen, um, in um, in a windowed mode. So, once you have all this, fire them up, uh, put MSI burner in this ca corner, well, I, I, I like to do it this way, and run the benchmark. Once you've run the benchmark, you can use Alt-Tab to bring up the MSI Afterburner. As I said, I like to put it here in order to see more of this picture here. And enable the fans right away. And you can enable power limit all the way to the maximum because it's only plus 10%, no big deal. And it's not going to cause any instabilities, so just go ahead and apply that. And next. What comes next is this. I will be talking about core voltage when I get to overclocking core clock. But first of all, you need to uh, overclock your memory and find the maximum. If you want to find the maximum, then you go uh, to the maximum that uh, you can squeeze out of your card. If you don't want to find the maximum, by the way, overclocking is not about going as far as you can. It's about going as far as it is as you are comfortable uh, with these numbers. As long as you're comfortable with these numbers, it's fine. So you can go anything 200, 300. For example, I went 500. Uh, this is my overclock that I achieved, by the way. Just in case if you're wondering, plus 218 on the core, plus 500 on the memory. Uh, I could go higher on the memory. I didn't, though, because it was something like uh, 585 maximum. But I reduced it to 500, to 500 because I, can, I feel like it's just enough, so... Um, yeah, like that, like so. So first what you should do is uh, you need to make sure that uh, you find your memory clock. In order to do that, pick a step that you will take. 
For example, I like to do it for GTX cards. If you're doing any other card, uh, not from Maxwell family, then you may have to take smaller steps here. But for example, I chose to take uh, steps from 50, 0 to 50, hit apply, and then watch this picture right here for any signs of instability. Uh, how the instability may, um, may be caused instability. Um, how can you see that it's unstable, I mean? I'm sorry <laughs> for that. If your driver crashes, if your comp computer freezes, or you see any sorts of visual artifacts, uh, visual anomalies on this picture here. So that would be uh, any sorts of black spots, colored spots, textures missing, textures flickering. By the way, make sure to run the benchmark before, if it's a new card that you have, make sure to run the benchmark before to make sure that your card is not faulty to begin with. Because it's if, if it's faulty and you overclock it, uh, your warranty may be void and you won't be able to return it for a refund or a replacement. So make sure that your card works and make some cards these days, even if you overclock them, uh, the manufacturer will still uh, replace it. So a lot of manufacturers now have that uh, policy where they, if you, even if you overclock the card and you broke it that way or it developed a fault because of that, then they still will replace it. But you need to check before. If you are worried about warranty, then you need to check beforehand before you start doing this. So steps of 50. You go up another 50, hit apply, and then watch picture again. For about 20, 30 seconds, that is enough usually for me. And then you take the next step, and the next step, and the next step, like so. Once you hit your maximum, if you hit the maximum and you see visual artifacts or your driver crashed, then you know that you need to take one step back. So if you were at 150, you go back to 100, and you know that it is stable. Once you're at 100, you're all good. Uh, but I reached 500. And I decided to stay there. I mean, I could go higher. I did go higher. But I decided to stay there. And make sure to watch those temperatures. So. Hit apply. 500, yeah? Once we found the memory overclock that we want, uh, we can move on to overclocking the, our core. I I am advising you to go slow on it. Plus 10. Plus, tw plus 20 maybe... Uh, plus 10 at the time, I mean. Why? Because if, if you increase it by too much uh, in one go, it can cause hard freeze and some problems with it. Um, but if you go slow, most you'll get is your driver crashes, uh, you hit the reset button here, over here, and then your driver will just resume normal work. So no hard freezes. And the same here on the core. So you take little steps at a time, plus 10, watch the picture. If it's stable, you can increase another 10, apply, watch the picture again, and again, and again, step after step after step. And if you overclock it, overclock it, overclock it, and for example, you were at 200 and it's still stable, uh, you go to 210 and you start seeing weird stuff on here on the picture. That means that it's unstable. And there are two things that you can do. You can either roll it back one step and be happy with what you've achieved and stress test it for a continuous time to make sure that it is stable. Or, or you can increase the core voltage. Core voltage is needed to try and stabilize the core clock that you've achieved, uh, but it's not stable. For example, if you see uh, artifacts with this setting, you can just increase the core voltage by 10, by, by 5 or 10, hit apply, and then uh, see if that helped. If it didn't help, you can increase by another 10 or so, hit apply, well, you get my point. You can just go higher and higher and higher as long um, as your uh, power limits 
allows you and your uh, temperature allows you to because increasing the voltage also increasing uh, the power drawn for the card and it will cause in uh, more heat uh, more temperature so bear that in mind when uh, doing the core voltage but it can't go very high it's only 87 millivolts so it's pretty safe and as I said, um, if you've achieved your stable overclock, if you're happy with it, what you do, what you need to do next is you need to remain in that setting. You can just save it as a profile, like so, and keep the benchmark running for about 20 to 30 minutes or so, just to and observe it, just to make sure that it really is uh, stable for long uh, duration, uh, for long periods of time. Uh, once you've tested it, once it's all okay, you can quit the benchmark or you can quit it at any time and come back to it. It's not a problem. You can just remember the numbers you've chosen. So there you go. Uh, then what you do is you go and play a game, any game you want. Witcher 3, Middle Earth, uh, Metrola Slide, Battlefield, anything. Because even though in the benchmark it was stable, it can still be unstable in games. So you play a game and you watch out for the same signs of instability. Crashes, uh, visual artifacts, visual anomalies. If you get them, then you need to go back to MSI Afterburner and start tweaking again. If you want to tweak uh, the core voltage, you can do so. If you don't want to touch the core voltage and go higher on that, you can just roll back a core clock or roll back memory clock apply it and then go back to the game that you played and see if that helps the situation if it doesn't again go back to the MSI afterburner go back another step go back another step test it again and again and again until you get the stable overclock and about applying overclock at the system startup if you're absolutely sure that your overclock is stable and you don't mind it running all the time then you can choose this option but i generally do not advise you to use it um, you can just fire up the amateur afterburner choose the profile you want you can have like three profiles uh, maximum overclock medium overclock and like small overclock whatever you want you can just create several profiles and use them as you as, as you please as your uh, your needs arise so there you go uh, that was the overclock of uh, 980 ti i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope uh, that this helps someone if it did uh, i would appreciate it if you came back and uh, shared your results in the comment section below um, if you, any you run into any troubles also let me know but until next time, RG out, don't forget to leave a like.